video is about tips and tricks on how to build amazing concrete slabs. My name is Tyler Lay. Thank you, my concrete maniacs, for watching, for subscribing, for leaving me a comment. Thank you. Love you guys. So let's talk about slabs. Slabs, these are these flat plates that are usually placed on the ground over soil, and they're for our patios and our sidewalks and our house slabs, and why are slabs awesome? Well, simply put, it's so that we don't have to wear galoshes everywhere, you know those boots? Yeah, we don't have to wear them because of slabs. What am I talking about? Because if we didn't have slabs, we'd all be walking in the mud, like constantly, it would be, ugh, yuck. But we can instead have these beautiful, amazing, wonderful concrete surfaces where we can enter entertain and have a great time and not have to walk around in the mud. But how thick do slabs need to be? I get asked that question all the time. Well, it depends. If I have to hold cars and people, then I want it about four inches or so thick. If I'm holding trucks or big old industrial equipment, then it is usually between six inches and eight inches thick. And if I've got like heavy trucks, like 18 wheelers, if I'm carrying airplanes, it's eight inches, 12 inches thick, sometimes even 20 inches thick. It really depends on the soil, the loads, and the load placement. Now, one big no-no or thing to watch out for for slabs is edge loading and corner loading. They are a big deal. What am I talking about? If I have my slab here and I load it right here on the edge, maybe a car drives on it, a truck drives on it, something gets dropped on it, that's a big deal because the base doesn't provide as much support right on the edge. This can cause cracking and breaking. It can look like this and, oh, man. So how do we stop cracking in our slabs? Well, concrete shrinks as it dries, like this is a slab of concrete on our soil. If we have the sun beating down, the wind beating down on it, then that concrete actually zoomed in looks like this. See all those holes in it? Doesn't it look kind of like a sponge, right? As sponges dry, they shrink. What am I talking about? Yeah, you know what I'm talking about. Shrink, shrink, shrink. The concrete does the exact same thing. It's just much more brittle and it will cause more cracking. So as the sun is beating down, the wind is blowing, this concrete tries to shrink. And if it's held in place by the soil underneath, this causes stresses. This is called restraint. At least that's the technical term for it. If the restraint is high enough, it will cause cracks. So high, resist, high restraint with high shrinkage concrete, will it cause cracking? No, that's bad. If on this project, they cast this slab here on top of another slab here, that is about as much restraint as you can ever possibly get. And so as it started to shrink, you can see it got a big old crack in the middle. Ugh. So how can we stop this? How can we stop this cracking that happens um, um, in the slabs? Well, you can decrease the shrinkage of your concrete. You can reduce the restraint for the area below. Let's talk about decreasing shrinkage first. This is basically designing your concrete to shrink less, to have a low amount of shrinkage. And the simplest way to do this is to reduce your paste volume. Your paste is what shrinks. It is the sponge part. If you can reduce the sponge, you get less shrinkage. You would like to have less than 25% paste, but if you are not a concrete mix design um, aficionado, then this might be easier, easier for you. If you want a water to cement ratio less than about 0.45, and you want to aim for about 564 pounds of total cementitious material per yard. So I would also use a water reducer if it is my slab and I would shoot for about a six inch slump or so for that concrete to show up at my job site. Also, the base is critically important. You want to create a well compacted and smooth base about plus or minus one half of an inch after it's done compacting. It should look something like this. And you want to cover that base with two, count them, two layers of six mil plastic. Yeah, I'm showing it like this. Why do we use two? So they can like slide on top of one another like two pieces of paper. Here we go, we got our base. We put our two layers of six mil plastic down. Then they should look something like this. And we don't want any wrinkles in it because those wrinkles will reflect up in our slab and cause problems. And then we will cast our concrete on top of it. So as our sun starts to beat down and our wind starts to blow, the concrete will try to shrink. And when it does, 
it's not being restrained by that stuff underneath it and it will be able to move. Yep, see how it shrank and moved? That's good. That's what we want. This means less cracks, aha. But be careful, be careful. There are some bad things about this. Number one, if your base is on a slope or your slab is on a slope, the slab will try to walk. That means it will try to move over time, but that's okay, you can fix this. You just have to anchor it or tie it to something else. So that's something, you a detail that you wanna watch out for. Also, if you wanna use carpet on your slab, then you need to wait for the concrete to dry out. If not, you will get mold, you will get debonding issues, and how long do you have to wait? This is a really good question. It depends a lot on your concrete. However, if you do have plastic under your slab, it takes it longer to dry, about 14 to 28 days. Again, it depends on the concrete mixture. And if you have no plastic, it usually takes less time, usually about three to seven days. But wait, there is more. I didn't talk about everything there was to talk about slabs, but I talked about a lot. You got to tune in for part two to hear the second part of what's going on. In summary, Pick your slab thickness based on how it will be used. Use plastic under your slab, to, if you can, to help reduce cracking. I hope you liked this video. If you did, make sure you like this video. You subscribe to my channel. You leave me a comment below about what your experiences are with slabs. I wanna hear what you experience and think. And of course, check me out on Facebook and also Instagram. Take care, everybody. See you in part two. Bye.